Yeah, but so to your second question on some of the protocols and procedures and really understanding that, you know, we wrote that and I wrote it in a book uh, that we published a year and a half ago and people can get the book called Navigating Through the New World of COVID. And that's on our website at topetabiosecurity.com. And that book gives you all the basic stuff on what you need to do to protect yourself in your home. What do you, what, how do you clean your bathroom? How do you keep yourself from being affected by the virus? Understanding the transmission of diseases. And then when it comes down to if you do get infected, the basic medication you have to have to be able to navigate is one, man, you better make sure that you have a pulse oximeter to measure O2 level. You better make sure that you're checking your temperature. You better make sure that you can get you some prednisone or decadron or dexamethasone to prevent the inflammatory response. You better not use, uh, you better not be using uh, Motrin. You better be using Tylenol because we've shown that the Motrin can cause increased inflammatory situation. You better get you some nitric oxide because I was part of the FDA drug trial and nitric oxide, we put these uh, different clinics around the country giving minorities this nitric oxide that people would take 48 hours after they've been infected and this prevent them from cascading to uh, migrating to the worst part of the uh, COVID situation. And then people that are not sick right now, one of, I think the most important vaccine that you, everybody needs to get, and I've said this a million times, and a million people have taken that vaccine, for, is for the pneumonia. And that vaccine is called pneumonia, Pneumovax 23 or Privenar 13. Because people don't realize the thing that kills you with the COVID situation or with the flu is the pneumonia. So if you can take the vaccine that can prevent you from getting pneumonia, you want. You might get sick, but you're going to survive. And that's the most important critical uh, thing in the, in the spectrum. I call the COVID pneumonia spectrum is treating the bacterial pneumonia caused by streptococcus pneumonia. So that pneumovax, you need to go down to your right age, CVS pharmacy, go to Walgreens, say, hey, I want that pneumovax. And, you know, you don't even have to have a prescription. Just get it. And back in the day, we were injecting one-year-old newborns with it. And America kind of fell out of that because I think we kind of became complacent. But that is the vaccine that you have to have that's going to take you to the next level of that protection. And then you need to make sure, if you're one of these people that believe in the vaccine, you need to make sure you understand what your neutralizing antibodies are. And that is that you get a vaccine that tells you if that vaccine is really producing the neutralizing antibodies that it's supposed to make. And I believe that a lot of these, these vaccines are not doing it because we have so many different infections, so breakthrough infections now. Mm -hmm. So how would you know? How, how can you tell if the vaccine is doing its thing and, and helping you to get through to the other side if you get it? There's only one way you can do that. You have to go get your neutralizing antibodies. And it's amazing. I've done, I've done some talks at churches that have a thousand people in, them, in Little Rock, Arkansas, big church. And I go in there and I get up on that stage and I'm talking to everybody for one hour. And I go, how many of you folks in here have gotten the vaccine? And 99.9% .9 all of them beautiful people in that period put their hands up. And I go, how many of you folks know, how many people, how many of you folks know what your neutralizing antibodies are? And not one of them knew what the antibodies. You might be getting the placebo. You don't know that. And that might explain to you why that people are getting recurrent infection because you don't know what your neutralizing antibodies levels are. And that's why I told you folks a year and a half ago uh, is that you will be getting booster shots. And people thought I was crazy. I said, you will be getting booster shots, two or three booster shots for the next 50 years. Take that to the bank. And guess what you're doing right now? You're getting two, three, four, five booster shots because the vaccines do not have that long-term effective immunity. That's why you have to be getting, supposedly getting re-vaccinated, re-boosted. But now with the new Omicron and the new IHU, the vaccine is really, this is non-existence because of the mutations. And it's in the paper today with the new France IHU, which is more resistant than the Omicron, the vaccine is not gonna work one bit iota. That's a fact. And that came out six hours ago. Oh my gosh. So we're thinking Omicron. You just mentioned a whole new variant. 
You just talked about getting the vaccine. You talked about the booster shots, right? I use myself as a prime example. I'm waiting to get the booster shot, right? So right now, if I got COVID or if I got this new variant that you're referring to, you're basically telling me that I'm not good to go. So, and then you also mentioned this uh, shot so it would help me with pneumonia, right? So when does it stop? Are we in the cycle you know, of uh, just shot after shot. And oh, by the way, does that mean we should be expecting to get a shot every six months? How is that going to go? You're going to, well, if you go down the vaccine, and I want to make sure everybody understands, everybody on the world knows what Dr. Rowan's viewpoint is on vaccines. I am a pro vaccine guy, period. I'm the guy who's injecting children in the jungles of everything. So, measles, mumps, or bellas. I'm packing this medication on my back, walking eight hours in the jungles to get to a clinic. So I'm a pro-vaccine guy. But this vaccine, I'm sitting on the sideline because I already see what's happening with all the different adverse effects. And you said the magical word for yourself. You don't, I'm, you don't you have to be a rocket scientist. How do you know if the vaccine's working? Well, you have to get your neutralizing the antibodies. And you probably have, you don't even know what your levels are. And so then you have to go down that line if your levels are supposed to be what it is. And we know that the vaccine themselves only lasts for 60 days. You begin the you begin the booster shots every three months, period. That's just the way it is. That's straight science. You look at my background. My book says clinical immunology, clinical virology, medical microbiology. I am the expert. I teach this stuff. Oh my god! So mutating, right? So you said potentially every three months. I also know that the immune system is really important to have it, you know, like built up and strong and ready to go. So what are some of the other things that we can do outside of the vaccination and the booster shots to make sure that our bodies are strong and ready to tackle this? Because, you know, getting a virus or getting the flu or whatever, this isn't new to us. This is something that right. we're used to. The difference here is it's killing more people than we're accustomed to seeing, right? So yeah. how do we make sure that in addition to these shots, we are making our bodies strong enough so that we're able to tackle this because it's well, not going away. Right. It's not going away. And, 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 and people are calling me a, 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 a truth seer, the future seer. I mean, I just saw it. You should, you should read my, my Instagram. It's blowing up now because I said, Doc, you told us two weeks ago that the one from France was coming and they only have in France called IHU. So this is the reality, folks. The reality is that what you need to do is make sure you have a positive attitude. You gotta make sure you're taking a multivitamin every day. I'm not talking about going and eating 1,000 oranges and try to get vitamin C because you're not gonna use that. You have to use what your body's gonna use. Have a great diet, great attitude. Exercise the best you can. You know, try to have a healthy lifestyle. Your lifestyle, the one that you choose to be because everybody's a little bit different that you feel that you're healthy. You do that for yourself. And then you make sure you do all the basic biosafety security protocols I've always talked about. I don't care if you're vaccinated or unvaccinated. You better wear a mask. Well, nowadays, it doesn't matter if you wear, uh, you better wear a mask because the cruise ships just shows you what I've been talking about. The cruise ships is the ultimate petri dish. You got 3,000 people on a cruise ship. Everybody's negative before they get on the ship. Everybody's fully vaccinated. And guess what? The ships are quarantined now. Everybody on the cruise ship is infected. So what happened to your vaccine? That tells you the ability of the Omicron virus. It tells you the ability of IHU virus. And that is why you have to get back to your basic bio, uh, basic safety protocols. You better wear a mask. That mask better be an antiviral mask. You better wash them hands of yours uh, with some great antiseptic soaps. So you better not be touching that kiosk machine at the bank or putting your PIN number at the uh, ATM at McDonald's or the gas station because it's all contaminated with feces and stuff. You better make sure before you touch that cart that you push at Walgreens or Walmart that a thousand other people touch, you better make sure you disinfect your hands. You better make sure when you go to the produce store and you're looking about to get your bananas and your apples, look what people do. They blow their nose, they touch, they squeeze, they touch your avocados, they put the grapes in their mouth, they put the food back in there and you take it home. That stuff is contaminated. So you have to make sure that you're de de disinfecting your produce and stuff. That is the way you're gonna get through this. This is what we call situational awareness. 
making sure you get on an airplane and you're flying, you better have an antiviral mask. And if you have to use a bathroom, you better not make sure you touch anything in that bathroom because that mm-hmm. bathroom is completely uh, contaminated. And so if you're sitting in that seat, you better make sure you bring yourself some antiviral stuff to spray that seat down uh, to make sure because you'll be sitting in other people's feces. And so that is the type of stuff you have to do, making sure that you do not touch that airline, uh, airplane um, magazine. That thing is so contaminated, even touching the, the, uh, the tray table to feed yourself. Don't do that unless you spray it down. This is what you have to do. And when you go to hotels, making sure you bring your own air purification because the hotels just shown yesterday that the hotels are virus spread like wildfire and hotels, oh. somebody coughs, it goes into the next room. And you can read that article on my Instagram about that. So these are the things you have to do. You have to create that individual bubble for yourself. You have to create that bubble for your family. You have to create that bubble for your jobs. And you make sure if people come to your house, they don't wear their damn shoes in your home. Nobody wears your shoes in the house because the virus is transmitted under, uh, under the bottom of your shoes. So you make sure you tell them take them shoes off and you disinfect them shoes. So these are the little simple things. If somebody's sick in your family or somebody comes to your house, you make sure that they use that bathroom, that they shut that lid because if most people don't put that lid down. They flush that lid. That feces goes all over the bathroom. That's what we call fecal air. And that's one way the virus gets spread too. We had a, a public health housing in Chicago. I spoke there about six months ago. One person was infected in the building. He took, uh, he used a toilet. He flushed that toilet. That virus went up into the air vents, infected everybody in the building. And they had to quarantine the whole entire building. So you got to make sure your air purification unit and folks are doing what they need to do. Hmm. Now that was eye opening. When you know better, you do better. Thank you for tuning in to the Mandy Lachey channel. Make sure you tune in to our next episode as we continue the conversation with Dr. Roland talking about our future with COVID. Until we tune again, please protect yourselves and each other.